Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Wednesday, September 4th, 2019, and today we're going to be looking at the 2020 electoral map based off the 2018 House election results taking out uncontested races. Now, if we look back, 2010 definitely was not an indicator of what happened in 2012. I'm not saying that these election results are going to be the ones we are going to see in 2020 or are an indicator uh, or an exact indicator of what we're going to see, but we should have a general idea. 2010 was a different year because of turnout. 2018 rivaled presidential election turnout compared to 2010, which really didn't mean much in terms of turnout. They didn't really meet that same standard that 2018 hit, and 2018 had a number of voters, over 100 million voters nationwide, and that is something that can't be beat in terms of midterm elections. Now, percentages can be beat in previous elections, I'm pretty sure, uh, but still. 2018 definitely had a really good turnout for uh, the Democratic Party, and if that continues into 2020, we could see a replication of what we saw back in 2018. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this electoral map. So, this is taking out uncontested races. So, what do I mean by an uncontested race? Well, that typically means that there is a Republican running or a Democrat running with no major opposition party candidate. For example, there could be a Republican running in the state of Kansas, and their only opponent is either a Green Party candidate, Libertarian candidate, or Independent candidate, or all three, or just a combination of them. Uh, and that would be considered an uncontested race, uh, typically if they aren't exactly the most formidable opponents. They will probably end up getting 1-2% statewide, sorry, not statewide, district-wide, uh, and so there really is no real opposition. Opposition in the House of Representatives typically takes place between a Democrat and a Republican. I understand there may be some exceptions with independents, but this is talking about completely lopsided districts in which the opposition party won't even try and won't even waste money to run a candidate, even in a year like 2020. So we start off this electoral map uh, pretty blank. Uh, looking at it, it definitely looks similar to a map we've seen in the past. I'm not going to say which one yet. 2018 was obviously a good year for Democrats, so you can go ahead and pick that one. Uh, out from that type of characterization on its own but we do have some safe uh, i'm not doing this by margins by the way i will be doing this based off a uh, i guess pure uh, i guess safe for either state um, i just don't have the margins up with me right now uh, but the results are the same anyway again i just think that this should be a pretty interesting map i'm not saying that this is an indicator of what we are going to see in 2020 but a general idea of actually seeing how the nation voted back in 2018 if it was a general election year so let's go ahead and fill in the states that we know are going to be the same states with actually small amounts of electoral votes that wouldn't have any chance of flipping just because of the fact uh, that um, they just really don't count for much, to be completely honest. that That's just how it is. Nothing personal against some of these states. Uh, but we can go ahead and fill in these. That gives uh, Donald Trump, I guess, the Republican candidate, whatever, uh, 123, sorry, 126 electoral votes. As for the Democrats, there are some as well. The West Coast, obviously, the state of Hawaii, going over to Illinois, Maryland, Delaware, and New Jersey, pretty much up in the Northeast. This also makes sense as well. Uh, that's just how it is as well. New Hampshire and Maine we will come back to because those are swing states. But uh, the Republicans are at 126 and the Democrats are at 182. We have 230 toss-up electoral votes. Now, looking at this map, generally in every single election prediction, we end up with these same exact swing states. And why, you might ask? The American electorate. These are the same swing states from 2018 in some of these uh, Senate races. For example, Texas, Florida, uh, states like Virginia, where uh, I do not believe, actually, I think they had Tim Kaine. It was not a toss-up, uh, but some of these states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota actually were pretty solid for the Democrats, uh, but states like Ohio were a little bit closer, uh, states like West Virginia, which are safe red in this one, but uh, just talking about some of these swing states, uh, Colorado did not have an election. Arizona actually flipped from red to blue, which is pretty surprising. Nevada also, a swing state as well that we saw back in 2018. So this electoral map typically replicates uh, what we see with the general American electorate, as in they don't like to decide their president ahead of time. A lot of these states swing back and forth for a good reason. That is something that's really good for our democracy. Uh, something, I guess, not having lopsided elections every single election season. Uh, but pretty much this is a large number of toss-up states. We shouldn't see uh, these many toss-up states in 2020 based off my personal opinion. I do think Donald Trump is probably going to solidify in some states like Texas, Georgia, and North Carolina. Though they may hold some promise for Democrats with certain candidates, there's no guarantee, number one, they win the primary, and number two, things don't come out against them. Again, these are still Republican states at heart. 
um, and it's going to take a lot to flip them. But as I just mentioned, Texas, Georgia, and North Carolina, let's go ahead and cover those three. Now, they do hold some pretty interesting results. You can expect Texas being good for the GOP. That's just how it is. Same thing with the state of Georgia. That is another state that, though, has had some Democratic pickups in both Georgia and Texas. It's not enough to go ahead and flip the state. But North Carolina, taking out uncontested races, the Democratic Party won the popular vote. There was one uncontested race, I believe, in North Carolina's third district, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and the Democratic Party would have won the popular vote without that particular district, or if they had a Democratic candidate there, even if they had won only 30% of the vote, uh, which was still unlikely uh, at the time, looking at the year that it was in. But North Carolina, what is interesting is how gerrymandered the state is. I'm not saying gerrymandering only occurs for the GOP, but there is no reason for Democrats to win and on, uh, in the state of T North Carolina, practically the popular vote, and only carry three to four seats. We're going to go ahead and see how North Carolina's ninth district ends up anyway. Uh, but still, there is no reason for that. Gerrymandering is uh, abysmal. I mean, in my home state of Maryland, we see gerrymandering. And though, even if it was a fair and balanced map, the Republican Party would still probably only get one more seat. But in comparison for North Carolina, the Democratic Party should have more seats. There are plenty of other examples where Democrats are in favor because of gerrymandering and same thing for republicans so um, i'm just pointing out my home state of maryland because i know that one best and north carolina is also a very stark example of what uh, we think about when we talk about gerrymandering but 197 electoral votes for the democrats 180 for the republicans now uh, we have the sun belt filled out over here and you can pretty much guess how these are going to end up. Colorado, Nevada, and New Mexico are all Democratic states. That makes sense looking at the composition. New Mexico does no longer has any Republican representatives. Colorado, I believe there's a pickup. And the state of Nevada, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, that one stayed in favor of the Democratic Party as well. But the state of Arizona will actually end up being a pure toss-up, meaning there are equal Republicans and equal Democrats. Should be pretty interesting. Uh, seeing how that ends up in 2020 in the Senate race there with Martha McSally. Um, that has nothing to do with House elections, but she did serve in the United States House of Representatives. Um, so did Kristen Sinema, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but now we have one Democrat from Arizona and we have one Republican, but we could see two Democrats or one Democrat and one Republican, as I just mentioned. So 217 for the Democrats, 180 for the Republicans. I'm sure you want me to fill in the North for right now. Uh, let's go ahead and characterize New Hampshire and Maine as Democratic states. Again, those two states. I believe Maine's 2nd District may have actually flipped in favor of the Democrats. Let me go ahead and Google that right now. Maine, oops, uh, one second. Maine uh, CD2 2018 results. Let's go ahead and see because that should be pretty interesting. I do not remember that one specifically, though I probably should, um, but I do not. Uh, let's see, house results. It's for some reason, my phone really just messed up but um yeah so if that one actually flipped that one should be pretty interesting let me not go ahead and just talk about maine completely uh but that puts the democrats at 225 the republicans at 180 um let's see house it says dems win oh no that's talking about the house representatives uh, i do not know about um maine large like i say the main governor they also have they don't have the house you know politico fix your uh, i don't even know to be completely honest it's not like they didn't hold house elections. Okay, I have to use another website. Maine's first district Democrats held, and then Democrats flipped, uh, actually, Maine's second district. So that was actually a very small flip, very, very um, uh, narrow flip right here. Um, apparently, the first election results ended up with the GOP candidate ahead, but I'm pretty sure Maine is one of those states where it ended up moving down into a runoff if I'm not mistaken. But that's pretty interesting. The Democrat actually lost in terms of the popular vote the first time around, but I ended up winning there anyway. Um, but I'm sure you're dying for me to go ahead and fill out the rest of this map. I'm not going to keep you here uh, too much longer. The state of Virginia goes to the Democrats and also the state of Florida as well. And that should give you a big hint as to who wins this election. Uh, but Florida actually goes to the Democrats taking out uncontested races, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, the state of Ohio goes to the, the Republican Party, which is uh, good for the president, but Let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the map. Minnesota goes to the Democrats. Iowa goes to the Democrats. You should expect that one three to one in the House of Representatives in favor of the Democrats. Wisconsin goes to the Democrats. That's one also should be pretty expected. I think it's four to four now if, or five to three. Um, Michigan is actually an exact tie right now. And I believe Pennsylvania may be actually as well. 
Uh, but that puts the Democrats at 329 electoral votes compared to Republicans 198. Now, this reminds me of the 2012 map, just with Arizona as a toss-up and Ohio and North Carolina flipped. Uh, but other than that, we're seeing a very similar map. Now, again, I'm not saying this is what we're going to see in 2020, just the 2020 electoral map if uh, the electoral map had been the same map that we saw back in 2018. So I guess 2018 voting numbers applied to a general election, general presidential election. So that wraps up this video. Go ahead and comment down suggestions that you guys want to see because uh, this one I saw in uh, one of my other comment sections. So I went ahead and did it. It was a pretty fun video to make. I really like making these videos. Uh, but yeah, so go ahead and comment down suggestions below and I will see you all tomorrow.